Hey guys, Crafty here from Living in Beta and in today's video we will be covering off 10 of our top tips for those beginning their journey in Cyberpunk 2077. Now as this is mostly aimed at beginners, our aim is to shed some light on areas you may have missed to benefit your ongoing main character or maybe give you a solid foundation for a new one. Those seasoned veterans out there may find some points trivial, but that being said, hopefully there are some little snippets that may come in useful for those as well. This list of course isn't the be all and end all of tips that are available in the game itself. Our focus is in what we perceive to be our top 10 as of patch 1.5. There will be many more out there and I encourage our community to come together and spread some of that sweet knowledge in the comments below. Now without further ado, let's get on to the tips. The first tip brings us to the very start of our journey, essentially to what turns out to be the very foundation of our playthrough, outside of choosing the easy difficulty and telling your friends you play on very hard of course, and that is Life Paths. The first choice is the road worn, freedom loving, clan hardened nomad whose fabric is held together by honesty, integrity and a love to be in charge of their own future. Choosing this route helps you relate to those on the outskirts of the big city but also gives you personality traits that little possess who have never left its aura. As with every life path, you'll get your own unique starting prologue, where you get to traverse the outer edges of Night City and experience what a day in the life of a smuggler may look like. Then as you travel through the story of Cyberpunk, you will come to see many nomadic conversation options pop up, both whilst talking to those ingrained in the hustle and bustle of the Night City streets, and become more prevalent as you reach out and bond with those on the outskirts. Nomad for me is my favourite choice. There is something about being a misunderstood loner that really gets me going. I highly recommend picking this life path. Secondly, we have the city raised, respect fueled, strong willed street kid. Night City is your playground and no one else understands its inner workings like you. Raised within the politics of the streets, this life path gives you a unique spin on a foundation by making your character already understand what it means to come out from under the boot of society and combining that with a hunger to be remembered by everyone, young and old, stopping at nothing to get to the top. The prologue puts you in touch early on with some of the key figures in the Fixer world, teaching you a harsh lesson in trust while setting the groundwork for some future interactions down the line. The tailored conversation options of course come with this as well, allowing you to relate to those intertwined with the fabric of Night City, alongside giving you a unique perspective when talking to those on its boundaries. This one for me is maybe the most obvious choice, but also brings an air of familiarity to your character and it allows for some really relatable moments on your journey through Cyberpunk. A solid overall choice if you're unsure on what to pick moving forward. The third and final life path puts you in charge of the hardworking, individualistic, power-hungry Corpo. The skyscrapers of Arasaka are your home, making you no stranger to doing whatever it takes, often at the expense of social comfort, to progress further in the world. These characteristics will stand you in good stead as you mingle with the different hierarchies of Night City, allowing you the benefit of seeing through their intentions and being able to read between the lines of a somewhat murky environment using the corpo themed conversation options as ammo to dig a bit deeper. The prologue starts you off as an up and coming employee working in the counterintelligence division of Arasaka, currently tasked with cleaning up a damaging leak about an incident in Frankfurt that has jeopardised Arasaka's standing with the European Space Agency. The journey takes a turn to the unexpected as a layered series of events lead to competitive backstabbing and a complete eye-opening turn of fortune that I believe are the key components to fuel a comeback story. For me, the Corpo is unique as it is an ideology that you find yourself fighting against as you travel through the story of Cyberpunk, but that being said, there is an eerie sense of arrogance when tackling things this way. Maybe it's time to succumb to your inner pencil pusher. As you can see, at first this may seem like a very minor choice, just adding some flavours to the backstory of your character maybe, but as you play through the story you start to notice that the choice you make does matter a lot more than just for your own role playing pleasure. And CD Projekt Red have done a great job through the use of tailored prologues, unique conversation options and life path specific quests to make you feel closer to your choice than ever before. Definitely make sure you choose the right one, but remember you can always start again if you need to. 
Off the back of choosing your life path, tip number two brings us to the next big decision. Outside of spending hours on making yourself look pretty, of course. And that is what attributes you will be focusing on during your playthrough. Now, of course, these can be distributed to wherever you like. And you do get an additional 50 alongside the starting seven whilst you level up your character. But that being said, I would argue that where you allocate them before you even enter the game can really give you a benefit moving forward. My advice is to do some research on what type of playstyle you wish to be the anchor to your character's development. Do you want to focus on being a super fast Kill Bill inspired futuristic samurai? Then going into reflexes and cool early on could really benefit you. Is living out your fantasy as part of the anonymous hack group something you dream about on the daily? Then maybe stacking points in the intelligence tree could feed that hunger. Do you want to earn a massive amount of eddies just so you can gloat to all your RLL friends about how many hot babes you get in the afterlife? Then maybe you dabble in body and go full into the tech tree while subscribing to this channel for all your eddy making needs. You know it's right. We of course are exaggerating a little here but you get the picture. It's always good to start a playthrough and test out all the different aspects of the game. But we all know once you get some experience under your belt and the fact you cannot yet redistribute them attribute points. You're going to be debating starting over to really min max your ideal playthrough. Don't fall into the trap. Do it first and turn that character of yours into a lifer. The next tip might help when it comes to choosing where to allocate those precious attribute points. Throughout the game, each attribute point not only dictates how your character plays in combat, but it has a big effect on how you interact with the environment and NPCs alike. Tech, body and reflexes can be used to unlock doors and access areas that may not always be accessible. This also becomes even stronger as those trees become higher in level, allowing for more choice when choosing how to approach a certain mission or tackle a certain enemy. Cool body reflexes and intelligence are great for navigating conversation options and potentially getting a different outcome that may not have been obtainable. Intelligence when being able to hack things or react to high level tech in a way that very unintelligent characters would not be able to can really help you get control of the whole environment in some cases. These may not seem like groundbreaking decisions, but from personal experience, the unique ways I've been able to approach quests not only makes the story feel more catered to me, but also makes each playthrough more enjoyable than the last. Our next tip might seem like a self-explanatory part of the game, but I want to focus just a second on the cyberware part of Cyberpunk 2077. When the first trailer dropped and we saw the cyber psycho pinned to the ground by a max stack agent, it made you think about what are the possibilities that could really happen in this world and how can we customize our characters of course you have the standard approach of any rpg where you have the attribute trees and with the perks residing inside and even in some simple terms as well you have pieces of armor that have mods on and you know give you those added benefits of course this all filters into your stats of your character but the cyberware aspect of the game gives you that added benefit that you can really cater to your you know your approach to combat or how you want to traverse the world or how you want to approach certain missions cyberware can be really useful here and it can also help you tailor your character even more so to the kind of attributes you're focusing on you know things like just increasing your armor by 200 or having your ability to restore your health if you get in a sticky situation this gives a different dynamic to your approach to gameplay that makes you you know probably give you an upper hand over another character or another enemy in the game even the little simple things as well like increasing your health by 60 percent carrying capacity by 60 percent these are things that you might not think about and you might sleep on but this, this is a little benefit that can really increase the you know usability and survivability of your character and then things like you know reinforce tendons to get to different parts of the map you've never seen before or invisibility from the optical camo to approach quests that may be difficult for you at one stage but now you can sneak and creep around in the shadows without them realizing you're there it's important to take the take this cyberware tree as not only an added extra but something that grows as your character grows because each level that you go up in your attributes you know you may be able to purchase or at least increase the quality of some of the cyberwares you have on you we of course have done a very in-depth guide and that'll be linked in the description below but definitely take a look and start catering your character more to to how you want it to be and embrace that cyber psycho within you because some of the stuff you can do in this game via cyberware is crazy and let's not forget the arm mods because putting on gorilla arms or mantis blades or even the mono wire 
really does make your playthroughs even more unique than they could be. For this next tip, it brings us to Act 1 of the storyline of Cyberpunk 2077, and this is probably slightly more relevant for those of us out there that like to min-max their characters. So you can see here, you find myself on a level 17, level 33 street cred character. Um, and what you'll notice by going into the map is I actually haven't left the Watson area of Night City. And that's because, as I said, we are currently still in Act 1. And uh, the only thing left to do is the heist. Now, the tip here really is about doing everything you can before you go into Act 2. And you can see actually that I've managed, or the game allows you, to get all of the gigs done for Regina Jones before you even go into Act 2. Now, what's the benefit of this? Well, for those of you who've watched our gig video, and if you haven't, I'll link it in the description, you get rewards when you complete all the gigs for each fixer. So early on, you're already getting the completion for Regina Jones. Now, it's a cyberware mod that allows you to have some mitigation, etc. but you need high reflexes for that. So obviously, it doesn't benefit you right now, but it's still good to have. And you also because of being level 17 get the ability to level up a lot of skills early on you can see here i've already got reflexes to 10 and call to 10 and my tech ability to 5 and intelligence to 9 these are things i've been able to do again before i'm even in act 2 and i mentioned those for the min maxes for those of you who want to clear every quest in a game and maybe you're going for trophies or trying to unlock different parts different achievements making sure watson's done before you even get to open the whole game um, there's just something about it for me that really, really, I really found interesting. And, you know, being level 17 and 33 street cred going into the heist also makes you, you know, slightly more powerful, gives you abilities you wouldn't have had access to. And also just, I don't know, gives you a sense of completion. That you've done everything you can before you move on um, into the next part of the game. You've left nothing behind. You know, your character is it as most optimal it can be for the build you're going for. Your inventory is stacked with what it can be. You know, the weapons you found and the armor you found, the money you've created um, just by doing questing and things like this. It's important to get that kind of things under your belt. And you'll see as well, you know, in our next tip, we'll go into it. But I've managed to have enough money to buy decent cyberware as well because of the amount of things I've completed and this is not just about eddies right this is about having a high level and a high street cred to do this things like being able to turn invisible already for 15 seconds and jump higher you know and use things like a mono wire and have the legendary smart link a higher level operating system to be better in combat these are all things that if you rush through the act one like most people do and I did on my first couple of playthroughs you don't get to experience until later on right ironically my very first ever character on the game, I managed to complete the whole storyline and I was only level 32. I'm already halfway there already and I've only in Act 1. So yeah, the tip here is, in my opinion, do everything you can before you move to the heist mission and into Act 2. And it is 100% proven right here in front of your eyes right now that you can complete every gig for Regina Jones before you even embrace Act 2. So get it done, min-max and get your character to the best of its abilities before you even enter into the big world of Night City. Our next tip brings us to that much needed commodity and that is of course eddies and more specifically eddy making. Now we have made videos, many videos on the channel with regards to how to make eddies and they will be linked down in the description below. This one's going to be more focused around the guide we put out there when it comes to making eddies early on as a player. So what you're going to want to do uh, is a couple of things. First you're going to want to travel to the uh, sticking in the Watson area, of course, in Act 1, coming to the fast travel point that is Pinewood Junction, and you're looking more specifically to find the Ripper Dock here. Now, at this Ripper Dock, uh, he's just inside here, um, he will sell a crafting spec for something called Target Analysis. Now, you'll notice on the video when you watch the more in depth guide, many people saying that he doesn't always show up with the Target Analysis crafting spec, and that's the same here as you can see. If this is ever the case, you'll just go outside and of course wait that 24 hour period to, for his stock to replenish. And when you've purchased it, it's around 2 to 3k eddies which you can get easily by using of course gigs and the like around the area. You're then going to the crafting menu and you're looking for the item as you can see here called target analysis. Now why do we use this? Well firstly it's very very cheap to make. It's only 5 common, 5 uncommon and 
five rare item components to build. They're easily picked up throughout the game just by you know disassembling items you picked up around uh, Night City or the Watson area specifically or you can purchase them from stores which we'll go through in a second. And then when you have enough uh, components you of course craft, craft the item itself. And just to go into the inventory to showcase why it's so beneficial is it costs around 100 to 150 eddies to make and you can sell the item itself for 781 as you can see here. Now early on this is very very good. Now why we say early on is because it's obtainable very easy. Not only is this in the Watson area to get the crafting spec, um, but you only need five tech level to craft rare items. So if we go into the character menu just to showcase this, you can see my tech ability is five. On this character, that's all it's going to be because I only ever need to make these target analysis to make some money outside of, of course, the usual ways in game. And the reason for being level five is just so you can get this perk to allow to craft rare items. Simple and effective. You can even get level five from before you even enter the game by assigning, you know, attribute, point, attribute points early on. Now, the benefit of coming over here, um, just for reference, is in terms of buying the consumer the components to make it right. There's a gun store just here um, that, if you travel to, also sells the components to make the weapon. So the short and simple way of doing this is to go buy enough components until you run out of the amount of eddies you've got, make as much target analysis as possible rinse and repeat now in the video i do state that you could uh buy all the components you need craft as many target analysis you need then go to a drop point because they always have a standard variable of 20k eddies some people have made it uh clear to me though that of course once you buy all the components from this guy here you could then make all the target analysis from him and then obviously sell back uh, to him because you have more eddies to sell to right simple and effective um, go into here and just buy all the components you need and then of course you would make all the target analysis you need until you run out of components and then essentially make as much eddies as you need your only variable here is of course time so yeah quick and easy way to make eddies uh, early on I'm going to be using it throughout the whole playthrough uh, I think it's just easy and it allows me to not have attribute points in tech ability too high but of course, if you are a person that wants to have high tech and make bigger bang for your buck, check out the description below for the other eddy making guides that we've created. Sticking to the theme of crafting for a second, I think it's important just to run through how crafting now works in Cyberpunk 2077 because it's gone through many iterations since the game's launch. Now we have done obviously a more extensive guide and that'll be in the description as I said every time. But the standard way of looking at crafting is very simple. Firstly, you're going to be gauged by the how high your tech ability is, right? Your tech ability allows you to have the crafting tree and as you level up your tech ability, you can then place perks in the crafting tree itself. The higher the level, of course, the higher items you can create. You can see here, level 12 allows you to create epic items, level 18 allowing you to craft legendary items. The second thing to that gauge is crafting now is your crafting XP level as well. So as we discussed in the in one of our main videos, this unlocks different rest, different specs depending on the levels. You can see here level five allows you to craft rare weapons, mods, etc. Level seven allowing you to craft epic and so on. The items now are dictated by not only having the perk to create them, but also the crafting level to unlock the crafting specs yourself as well. Now, why is this uh, why does this matter? Well, in the crafting tree themselves, you'll have obviously weapons you can pick up in the world or be a rarity that you pick them up at, but also you'll have mods, for example, um, the world famous armadillo mod that you can see is currently set at rare quality for me because I'm only level five in crafting. As I level up my crafting XP bar, this will automatically scale to what that level is. So for those of you out there that are looking for like a legendary armadillo mod, for example, you're gonna to need to be at least crafting XP level 12 to unlock the spec for it, and then level 18 to be able to create it. So mods, etc., now scale with your crafting XP bar. Um, items like you find around the world though, obviously can be legendary already. You just can't create them yet until you've got a high enough crafting level and the perk, of course, to create them. You can see here, it even tells you the perk required to do that. It's also uh, important to note that if you pick up a, uh, for example, here, the Dying Knight, it's an iconic weapon um, that I've picked up. 
you can see here it gives you the option to create this weapon by trading in the version that you've currently got and then the materials you need to create the weapon. Um, you can essentially get any iconic weapon up to legendary status the majority of the time as long as you have the materials and the weapon themselves um, available to do so, right? So that's important as well because you're essentially picking up the crafting spec for the iconic weapons once you pick them up. So if you're like me and you like to hoard these weapons, it's good to collect them all as well. And lastly, I think it's important to note is just the upgrades, right? Upgrades themselves, I use it a lot um, depending on you know the items I find. I like to stick to the same kind of outfit sometimes on a player. And the benefit of this is you're able to upgrade the items you're currently using, right? So you see the pistol here, the legendary pistol. Of course, I need the correct components to upgrade it, but I can keep upgrading it until it matches the level of my character. You can see here it's keep going up and eventually it will stop telling me I have to be level 18 to then get to the next level of this weapon. It does allow us to kind of, you can see it here, so it does allow us to keep gear fairly level to where we are as a character, though I will say if you find an item or purchase an item at level 17 in comparison to me buying this gun at level 10 when I did, usually the base DPS is going to be higher, right? You also notice as well that uh, things like stasis effects, etc. don't change. The ones that are set on the weapon stick there. The only other important thing to note as well in crafting is when you're crafting a weapon, let's say this sniper for example, it will be set at a damage DPS level, uh, you know, the variables that it says it could get here, and then obviously the eddy amount. This does scale with level, crafting level, and tech ability kind of in unison. So if I had this weapon but I was level 35, this will be worth a lot more for me to craft and sell, but the components would pretty much stay the same unless I have perks in the crafting tree. Again, this is all explained very much in more detail in a lot of videos that we have on the channel, but it's important to kind of utilize crafting where you can, not only to gain you some eddies, but it can really make for a, a great build or a, you know, a very good kind of role-playing idea around a character where you only create what you use. But yeah, give it some thought, give it a play with it, Definitely there's some good specs out there to make some money. Worst case scenario, of course, as we said, you've always got the trusty target analysis. Our next tip probably kind of reveals the more OCD side of me, but it's all about inventory management. Now, that comes in lots of different stages in Cyberpunk. Of course, you have your inventory set here, and more specifically your backpack, which houses all the items that you have on your character at this time. You've obviously got different um, filters to go to the area you need but then you have your components as well that you can gain and also have on your person when it comes to being able to craft items as you know now these obviously don't have a carry weight which is good but certain items do and you'll notice you know in terms of clothing carrying around this silly little white item here makes my OCD flare up a little bit right and I would always go in and try and disassemble everything that I have that I don't need on my person, right? Because not only is it clearing out that carry weight, which of course is very precious, but also you can see here, you do gain the components for disassembling. And this obviously scales depending on perks you've got, but it's still worth doing. And this is just as prevalent in weapons as well. You know, this knife here that I don't need, that's maybe of epic nature is gonna give me more components. So instead of carrying it around, if I'm never gonna use it, let's just get rid. And it's important to keep doing this. Now, there is some places where you, of course, can't do it. Um, there's things like, uh, let me go into the actual consumables here. This is something that you used to be able to disassemble, right? All these items here you see that are not, you're not now not able to disassemble. Only the kind of green and blue items around, relating to healing you can now. But these items are all worth some eddies. And you can see here, I'm a bit of a pack rat when it comes to collecting items here but I never ever have got out this Mr. Whitey Spiced and had a nibble on it you know why have I still got it that's two two eddies right there that I can make use of so my advice here and the main tip is to use your inventory in an you know a more efficient way and make sure it's free of space now you see these don't actually have any um you see the little uh icon with a zero next to it that shows carry weight these don't have any carry weight so it doesn't really matter but clearing it out for me will just make my mind more at ease. And then there's other ways you can balance it as well, right? Your character does have uh, in the tech ability tree, the perk 
uh, scrapper that junk items are automatically disassembled. Now this was very much bugged in previous patches. It would disassemble everything. There was glitches out there that we'd like to use um, some junk items to duplicate. So we never wanted to take this perk. Or there was quest items that you obviously wanted to keep that this perk would then delete. They've suddenly fixed that now. So any items that are worth, you know, a decent level of eddies or our quest items they'll no longer be scrapped by this so if you want it to be automatically done for you then take this perk if you've got a spare perk point and then secondly of course you have your vehicle and safe houses for storage and you can see here on this you know you just get you just use the car menu for those who don't know or the vehicle menu and you just pick one of your vehicles to come up to you it will then arrive and then depending on what kind of vehicle it is you'll be able to open your stash you can see here in my stash, I like to save all the legendary items that I've collected and iconic items as well. Uh, and some kind of mods that have been here from quests re received or they've been put in there by fixers, right? It's a good place to store all the items. But the main benefit of this is your stash is always linked to other stashes. And depending, doesn't matter what vehicle you have, doesn't matter what apartment you go to or any of the new apartments you buy, all your stashes will be linked. It's a good place to go in and just, you know, Say, okay, I might not be wearing this item right now. You know, Johnny's shoes I might not be wearing, but at least I can store them away, save myself some carry weight, and I know they're in a safe place. So yeah, inventory management. Maybe not the greatest tip, but something that I think is, is very important out there, especially early on when you haven't got much carry weight. There, of course, is, just for reference, perks out there to help with this in the body tree. Um, you know, you've got one of the earliest ones you can get, increasing that capacity by 60. And then there is obviously mods out there as well to increase it and cyberware to increase it. But really, you can also nullify this by just looking after the, your inventory. So yeah, let me know how you feel about that in the comments. Are you a pack rat like me or are you OCD and need to keep it clean? Let's get on to the next tip. Our next tip is a little more ironic after telling you to make sure your inventory management is on point. But this tip is about looting everything you see. As is well known in RPGs, there is a massive benefit to being a pack rat and you never know when you're going to need something along the line. In Cyberpunk it's no different, I fully recommend picking up absolutely everything you see because at the very least it's free eddies to make at a vendor or free consumables for your next crafting spree. Enemies you kill, always drop something, be it weapons, armour or even junk items that sell for a good amount. There are also at least two or three boxes in quest slash side job areas that will contain something valuable. In some cases, very handy crafting schematics, unique weapons and armor, skill ups to give you perks in your XP trees, and in rare occasions, legendary drops. I even like the fact that I can build up healing consumables to an obscene level, so I become essentially unkillable if I'm able to get them off. Now, of course, trying to find those secretly placed items can be difficult at times, so it's actually a handy in-game ability that can help with this. As you may already know, you have a scanner on your character that is usually used for scanning enemies and at times utilising intelligence perks to cause harm or give you an upper hand in the battlefield. But this ability can also be used to scan the area in your immediate vicinity for any loot, or important items of course. This is something the game showcases to you very early on, more specifically when you visit Vic and he installs the infamous Kiroshi Optics. If you press it once, LB on the Xbox and whatever the equivalent is on your platform of choice, it will actually ping the loot in the area, giving you a visual, visual indication of what is there and where it resides. If you play RPGs like me, then getting into the habit of doing this after every encounter or when exploring a new area can really lead to some great finds. So yeah, loot everything, become rich in every sense of the word. Let's get on to the next one. Tip number 10 for me is the most important on this list. I cannot stress enough how much better this game is when you take the time to explore, do side missions and really get stuck into the world that lives around you. The side quests themselves, as mentioned in a lot of our videos, are more powerful in Cyberpunk than you think. Having the power to alter areas and its occupants, give you access to loot and riches that would be otherwise missed, and introduce and take away certain characters from the storyline, making each playthrough more unique and overall making the world more alive every time you play. This even stems into the seemingly less important NCPD alerts and fixer quests in the area. On the outside, these might just seem a repetitive chore, but when you do them, you realise that each can take you into areas you have never explored before, help you find and locate loot that is otherwise unobtainable, and in some cases change the outcome of a bigger story point down the line. 
I've even had cases where I've done a seemingly quick and easy side mission and five hours down the line had a call from a character in that mission with something else to do. It really does make the game feel more alive. They've expanded on this as well in patch 1.5 with those who were perceived to be close to you but felt hollow in their nature becoming more active outside their missions, utilizing the in-game mobile to start up conversations, check in on current events, or even initiate some romance that you sorely lack IRL. Adding to that, you a lot of the time have different ways to approach the types of missions NPCs give you, with quest givers giving you the opportunity to gain more rewards if you do it in a specific way. Maybe they want you to sneak and not get seen, or maybe they want you to not kill anyone and only use non-lethal force. All of these little features make things different and more flavorful every time. I felt like I could go on for hours about this, but in the interest of time and being as spoiler free as possible, I will summarize here. The game's main story takes between 20 to 30 hours to complete. Doing it this way would be like reading the blurb of a great novel and saying you've read the book. Take it from someone who's played 500 hours across three characters. Take the time, explore, and I guarantee you'll be pleasantly surprised. So there it is, this has been our top 10 tips for new players of Cyberpunk 2077. As mentioned, this list of course is just the start, there are many more tips out there and we urge you to leave a comment down below and share your favourite with the community. But if, if this video helped you out, drop a like on it, share with your friends and family, subscribe for more content like this one, and remember... Don't be a gong.